Coming up on First at Four, there are no survivors following a plane crash in Harlan County this morning. And some big names are on the campaign trail, making one final push ahead of Tuesday's midterms. And sunny skies back in the forecast through the week's close. What else is in stores? Coming right up as Mountain News First at Four starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, we begin with a developing story out of Harlan County. At least one person is dead after a plane crash. It happened near Tucker Guthrie Airport just outside of Harlan this morning. Folks in the area say they heard a loud crashing noise around 10 o'clock. The Federal Aviation Administration and Kentucky State Police are at the scene investigating. We are told the plane is small and again, at least one person is dead. We do have a reporter at the scene and hope to have more before the end of this newscast and also tonight at 6. And as always, you can check WYMT.com for the latest updates. Obviously, any names of those involved have not been released yet. And, you know, Steve, we don't want to speculate on perhaps a cause. We don't really know yet what happened with that crash this morning. But we can tell you there was a lot of fog in the area at the time. The sensor that you're seeing here is at Tucker Guthrie Airport and was showing visibility of zero at the time. So it was very foggy throughout much of the Cumberland Valley at that time this morning. So... Again, it's a little early to say whether or not that was a factor, but the visibility was very, very low at the time, and it, we had quite a lot of fog throughout the region this morning, and that's something I'm sure investigators will uh, continue to watch out for as well through the rest of the investigation as it takes place. Around the region right now, low 70s. It's a comfortable afternoon, plenty of sunshine, just a few areas of cloud cover, even over toward Pikeville, a few areas of uh, cloud cover at this point. Low to mid 70s. It's a beautiful afternoon. Breezes are light, and enjoy these light breezes while they're here because it will get rather breezy as we head into the day tomorrow. Satellite and radar is clear at this point, and we'll continue to see clear skies through much of the rest of the night and even into tomorrow as well. So as we run through the rest of the evening into the 70s, mid 70s, through the early part of the evening into the 60s overnight and back down into the 50s and in some spots the 40s as we head into the morning hours. Now coming up in a little bit, I'll have the latest on what that weekend forecast looks like and whether or not you'll have to grab the jacket for the first round of the high school playoffs tomorrow night. And that's all coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. With only five days left until the midterm elections, big names from both parties are hitting the campaign trail. From former President Barack Obama speaking in Arizona on Tuesday to former President Donald Trump campaigning in Iowa tonight, the final push to shore up support from voters is well underway. CNN's Ivan Rodriguez reports on the top issues politicians are touching on that could have an impact on races across the country. Days away from the midterm elections, voters across the country are hearing final pitches from big name politicians. You've got election deniers serving as your governor, as your senator, as your secretary of state, as your attorney general, then democracy as we know it may not survive. I'm here because Stacey Abrams can never be governor of the great state of Georgia. We've got to re-elect Brian Kemp. Latest polling of likely voters shows the number one issue for Republicans is the economy. For Democrats, the economy and abortion. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who will be campaigning in New York alongside Governor Kathy Hochul, says a midterm election is always an uphill battle for any party in power. People are worried about the cost of living. They're worried about the economy. Although the Republicans have absolutely no plan to do anything about that. While in Pennsylvania campaigning for Mehmet Oz, former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley saying Democrats haven't been tough enough on crime and change is needed. You shouldn't have to worry if you're going to get carjacked going to a restaurant. But that's what's happening in Pennsylvania. And you have a chance to make this better. Haley was in Iowa this month, along with other potential GOP presidential contenders, including former President Donald Trump, 
who will kick off his stumping blitz of four rallies in five days. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. A Chicago man is accused of making violent threats against the Republican candidate for governor in Illinois. Prosecutors say 21-year-old Scott Lennox called State Senator Darren Bailey's office last week and left a lengthy voicemail. A court document reports Lennox admitted to the call. He reportedly said he would skin Bailey alive and kill him. He's also quoted as saying, I know where he lives, I know where he sleeps, I know where his kids sleep. Lennox was in court yesterday on felony charges, including threatening a public official. He was given $75,000 bond with electronic monitoring and was ordered to stay away from Bailey, his family, and his associates. Well, if Democrats lose ground in Congress, they may learn something from the political shift in Florida. That state's Latino voters have moved firmly to the right. CBS's Christian Benavidez reports from Miami on that trend and why it is happening. Florida Democrat Debbie Mukersell Powell has a cautionary tale for her party. Elected to the U.S. House in 2018, she lost her seat two years later when her majority Latino community took a hard turn to the right. I think that it was a combination of factors, but misinformation absolutely was part of the reason. Mukersell Powell points to a GOP-financed campaign, spreading fears Democrats will bring the policies of socialist countries that many Latinos fled. We are focusing on improving people's lives every single day. We're focusing on reducing health care costs. What is radical about that agenda? A recent poll shows Democrats holding a 27-point advantage with Hispanic voters nationally, but it's a sharp drop from nearly 40 points in 2018. Take Miami-Dade County, long considered a Democratic stronghold. Latinos here account for 69% of the population. In 2016, Hillary Clinton won the county by 30 points. In 2020, President Biden won by just seven. Hispanics led. Giancarlo Sopo is part of that change. The Democratic Party is clearly moving in a left-wing direction, whether it's on economics or social cultural issues. And most Hispanics are common sense, middle of the road voters with, I would say, traditional or conservative values. And we don't want anything to do with that. Sopo says that's why Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is on track to win the Latino vote in his re-election bid, which would make him the first Republican in a generation to do so. People are just fed up with the Democrats. They've taken our communities for granted. And while Democrats are hanging on in states like Arizona, the GOP may have Latino voters to thank for some gains this election day. Cristian Benavides, CBS News, Miami. The Rio Grande Valley is seeing the impact of the Latino vote shift. During a June special election, Texas Republican Myra Flores flipped a House seat in a heavily Hispanic district. Former Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has won the country's election. Current Prime Minister Yair Lapid called Netanyahu to congratulate him on the victory and instructed his staff to prepare for an organized transition to power. As almost all of the votes have been tallied, projections suggest Netanyahu and allied parties will take 64 seats out of the 120 Knesset parliament. The election was marked by the highest turnout in Israel since 2015. The Central Election Committee says about 71 percent of eligible voters cast their ballots, which was more than in any of the last four elections that produced stalemates or short-lived governments. Coming up on First at Four, CBS and the former president of the company agree on a settlement worth more than $30 million. Plus, sunny skies are back again, and I'll have the latest on how long they last coming up after this. Join us.